So for my references, I'm going to be taking photos with my handy cam. I mean, uh, fiber shot. <laughs> Just so that I have um, a nice, accurate record of what it looked like before. photo of the back side. Just for that purpose. A nice uh, overall view of everything. That should really be helpful. Okay, that's that. The camera aside. All right. This entire clock mechanism is held together by a total of uh, four wedges. They're just uh, hand-formed iron pins, basically. And they can be pulled out with ease. There we go. There's one. Now this was made probably in a blacksmith shop in Connecticut. In the 1840s. It's kind of uh, incredible when you think about it. This looks like it was a repurposed Victrola needle as it has the characteristic taper of a Victrola needle, but maybe not. That's definitely not original to this clock. I think I had to zoom in on my area to focus. Or not. Here's another one. Oh, where did it? Oh, there it goes. Yeah. Yeah, this, this, uh, <laughs> this is sad. All right. We've got one more iron pin here. I'm going to just yank that out. Okay. The last time this was done that I have a record of was probably in the 1930s. But I am pretty certain that this clock has been apart since then. Um, I have reason to believe that someone has messed with it at some point. So, I'm going to get some more photographs. But that's all that's really holding it together. A couple of pins. We don't really have to worry so much about gear timing that, I'm, that I know of. This all should pretty much be self-explanatory. The photos are merely for my own record. Okay. So here we have the escapement mechanism. That just pops right out like that. There it is. In pretty good shape. The clock guy had uh, expressed that this clock, or this escapement mechanism, was more than likely replaced at some point. And I believe that he is correct. Um, it's hard to say if it was or not, but... There we go. This is, the, this is where the pendulum swings up. It, this attaches to the pendulum, which drives the escapement wheel. This is the um, the slotted wheel that times the chimes. So these shallow sprockets. So it'll hit a shallow sprocket, and when it hits a deep sprocket, it stops. So each shallow sprocket is a chime, and the deep sprocket is a um, or the deep recess is where it stops. And to remove this wheel. 
we have to remove this little piece here. It looks like it pulls up from its pin and slides out. But it was punched in there, so I don't think that's going to work for us. It's a little stiff, but not too much. Yeah, it looks like it was punched in place, and removing it might not be possible. Easily, anyway. I didn't really equip myself with many tools, either. That's good and tight. I'm going to leave that alone for now. It looks like to drill these holes, though, I'm going to have to have it flat enough. But i got to remove it. I do have to remove this piece here. So I want to get a good photo of that and make sure I know that it goes back where it belongs. So we're going to get a good photo of that. Side. Okay. All right. Take that out. To do that. It's interesting. There's, there's not a single screw in sight. Everything is pressed and punched in place. Not a single screw anywhere. So rotate that. Come on. It doesn't want to come out. Huh. This wire was bent and then, it w or after it was inserted, that's how they did it. Well, I don't want to take it out if I don't have to. I want to do as little damage as possible. Now back to the frame. The lower piece. This is where all the guts are. I'm going to take this out. Got the uh, hammer. Um, and we've got this little sprocket here. And yeah, these pivots are real dirty. I'd like to run this through an ultrasonic cleaner before I put it back together. We don't have to take this ratchet apart. This can stay together. I'll just lubricate it as one. At least that's what I'm going to do. But it's held together by a pin. A drift pin. And this drift pin's popped out. Pop goes the weasel. So we'll leave that assembly together for now. Just to keep everything together. Alright. I'm going to clean each piece individually. Yeah, there's a lot of dirt and stuff in these pivots and pinions. And, yeah, it's not really all that clean. So we want to make sure everything is cleaned properly, thoroughly, upon reassembly. Yep. Here's another ratchet. I don't see a maker's mark on any of this stuff. Not even a little bit. This is the uh, this is the hour hand pivot or pinion, and there's the minute hand. Some wear and tear on that. Yep. Here's another drift pin, and that just holds this gear on this shaft. That's all it does. And, uh, yep. Leave 
that there. And here's the lower part of the frame. And this little bugger is what keeps the, um, uses wind resistance to keep the, um, what am I saying? Yeah. It keeps the uh, chime running at, at a proper speed. If you were to put this clock in a vacuum, like a vacuum chamber, and ring the, or let the alarm, the, the chime go, it would, um, it would go crazy. But again, no maker's marks or stamps anywhere on this unit. No such thing. Um, where's the other part of the frame? I wanted to get a good look at this and see if maybe there had been one at one time and I'm not uh, having much luck. Maybe there was one scratched off or something, you know? Sometimes you just don't know. But somebody has had has had a field day working on this at one point and they were not very nice. They weren't very clean. They just sort of did whatever they wanted. And, uh, yep, that's not cool. Hmm. Interesting. Yep, no maker's marks. At all. Now let's see if I can put it back together again. <laughs> um, part of this is practice makes perfect, right? Uh, let's see. We're going to do this without memory, uh, just strictly off memory, okay? We're going to try it by, uh, based on memory. Okay? Game of Part Easy. Let's see if we can get it back together again without looking at the photos. Let's see. I don't know. I don't, I don't have much faith in this, uh. In, in, in this process at all. I don't think I'll be able to do it. Gee. No, I think this was over here. And it went on like that. Right? I'm trying to think here. This is the back. And the chime was over here. So maybe that goes like that, All right? And then one of these was for the chime, and one of them was for the clock. And there are two there should be two different pieces, like not interchangeable. Right, and um, oh, this is pitiful. Let's see, they have two different. No, they have same shaft sizes. One goes here, and one goes here. That much I know. Hmm. Help me out, guys. I think I screwed myself over real bad. Wait a minute. One of these had a lot of wobble in it. It was this one. This one had the wobble. And that was over here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we got this gear and we got this set of gears. These are the hands. And they go in the middle. And this one, this little bugger, hmm, I think it went right here. Nope. No, it didn't go there. Let's see. 
Gotta challenge yourself every once in a while, you know? I've never worked on a clock before. Why not start now? That's what I always say. Wait, wait a minute. I wish I, my hand wasn't in the way. Try to zoom in a little more. There you go. Alright. Watch me crash and burn. In all these gears. This one was extremely worn out. I know this drove the, um, the chime. No, wait, no, this is the escapement. Ha! Huh. Okay, so that, the escapement goes here. The duck says quack. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Well, these actually mesh together so let's see yeah these mesh together so they have to go together all right where's my uh, okay that's over there um, hmm This flag went over here. Let's see now a little more. That flag went over here, and then it meshed with this. Escapement has to lock into here. Like that. Okay. We still have a few parts left over. We have this gear. goes here. All right. Now, I have a few leftover pieces. But we're actually not doing too badly here. This is the chime. It goes here and it locks in with this spring. Chime goes. We've got this thing here. I've got a couple of extra pivots left over. It goes up top somewhere. Escapement thing goes, and yeah, that can go on later. Um, all right. Just gotta figure out where the hell this goes and why. So I do know that. Uh, uh, huh.
This is supposed to It's a bad camera angle, sorry guys. Uh, this is supposed to engage the chime. And that doesn't go there. Look for any extra pivot points. Okay, it goes here. And what it does is when this goes around to the hour, it's supposed to disengage or engage, sorry, the chime mechanism somehow. Maybe it goes this way. Perhaps. I don't know. I don't freaking know. So let's see. I think we pretty much got it. Except for a couple of uh, details. Very minor details. Uh, huh. Yeah. That's got pin in there for some reason. This is where the photos will come in handy because I'm not entirely positive that I'm right. In fact, I'm entirely positive that I'm largely wrong, to put it one way. Um, but I have the concept down, so I just need to now start focusing on rebuilding. That's another project for another day. But with the photos I've taken and with whatever materials are out there for clocks, I should be able to get this thing back up and running in no time. That'll be the fun part. So we'll just put all these pieces to bed, because that's where I'm going. To bed. I'm tired and listless. Um... But you can see that the, the frame has been bent in a few spots. Um, we don't want that. We want to straighten those out and, uh, and get that all squared away. Good night, guys. Well, the $25 dishwasher is still humming away. And we turn our attention back to the clock. So as you've seen, I've completely dismantled the entire mechanism, in, or movement, and this thing is horrifying. I mean, what is that? Why, why did someone take a damn claw hammer to it or something? Got all these scratch marks here, which I thought might possibly be a manu, like a, a cleverly hidden manufacturer's uh, insignia or something. No such thing. There's no real pattern to it. I've looked. Um, this is the the front plate, and it is really bent. Somebody took out a lot of their aggressions on this clock. Here's what really happened. This clock had had issues in the past, and someone instead of fixing those issues and properly restoring it, they just bent the frame to compensate for wear and tear. That's what happened. Some people are sick like that. Here's the back plate, and it's it's got some warpage going on as well. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this clock at this point. I, I, I really don't know. I'm going to definitely pursue restoring it, but I'm just a little disappointed at what I'm seeing. I can straighten out most of this with a with a nice firm surface, a block of wood, and a hammer. I can straighten out a lot of that. Let's take a look at some of these gears. Now, instead of making gears out of solid brass with a gear hob, this is how they did it back in those days. 
they've got two rings and basically made a cage out of out of wire and brass it's certainly cool but you can see there's a lot of wear on these uh, we'll call them t bars or teeth there's a lot of wear on most of these but they're still serviceable they still work larger gears are in good shape no missing teeth or anything crazy like that they seem pretty straight Tangled up. Come on. There we go. Take a look at this one. Now this gear. See, I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty straight. It's okay. But it looks like it had. It has been bent probably during manufacturing, who knows. But look at this gear. She was loud, I'll tell you that. This was a loud clock. Whenever the chime went, all you could hear was groaning sounds. Oh, it actually gives a character. Now, this is the escapement wheel. And my friend seems to think that this was replaced because it's in too good shape to be 160 something years old. Possible? Who knows? But this gear, which does most of the work, look at that. Yeah, there's some wear and tear there. Now, if I was a perfectionist, I may actually end up rebuilding these gears, but I'm not, so. I, uh, I just have no real desire to go that far into this. I could, I could actually replace those teeth or pegs or whatever. It's all pressed together. You know, there's no sense in losing my head over that. Here's this one. Now, one of the biggest problems with this clock is that the brass plates have like excessive wear in those little pivot points, those openings, which is where the gears are, which is what holds the gears in place. And the fix for that is to drill these holes out and place machined bushings in those holes. Now, the bushings are actually just lightly tapped in place You've got to use a precision drill bit and a keen eye for straightness to get those drilled out properly. But look at this mess. You can clearly see what the attempted repair was. What they had done is they took a punch or a chisel and they tried to close in those holes so that the, the parts that rest in those holes have less slack. That's not how you fix a clock, at least not today. But you got to remember that at one point, this clock was nothing more than just another household appliance, so it wasn't really a collector's item back in those days. It was like me trying to fix a dishwasher with duct tape. You know, it's really no different. When the clock breaks, you buy a new one. You know, it's not like a... And even today, this clock isn't worth a ton of money, even if it was perfect. You know, there's so many clocks from that time period that it really doesn't make it any more valuable. Um, but to me, it's more of a unique piece that I'd like to, you know, this will be my first ever clock project. And who knows, if I like it enough, I'll probably do another one. I sold off all those other clocks I had because I knew what was going to happen. I was going to get too involved and I'd have another hobby on my hands. I gave the best one to my father, who loves old clocks. Yeah, I let him pick one out, and he picked one out, and he still has it. And he's going to do with his what I'm going to do with this one, <laughs> hopefully. But, uh, yeah, these gears are a little worn. The shafts are worn. But, you know, hey, it still works. It just needs a little TLC. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is take all these parts down to my friend's shop and we're going to run these through a, um, an ultrasonic bath and that will uh, hopefully remove all the tarnish, grit, gunk, everything that's built up between these gears and uh, really clean it up well. Now the other parts, the winding pegs and the clock uh, hand holder thing, I still don't know what this is called. This is all taken apart and bagged so that none of the parts get mixed up. And these are the winding pegs and the ratchets and the assorted gears. So that's all going to be run through an ultrasonic bath. There's that one. So this is all ready to go to the cleaners. And uh, we'll get that squared away. Hey, check it out. Drake's Coffee Cakes. They don't make these anymore. And that's a collector's item.